It's time we start to dive deep into all of this wonderful Anthem information. We're going to be breaking it down bit by bit, piece by piece, video by video over the coming days, weeks, and months. We're going to be taking a look at stuff that was just revealed at EA Play. We've got information from Game Informer, a bunch of other outlets. In fact, Anthem is going to be on the cover of the upcoming issue of Game Informer. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested in getting a hard copy of a magazine that includes some Anthem information. The cover art is also pretty damn sexy looking, if I do say so myself. Today we're going to be focusing though on combat, gear, and the javelins themselves. Now whenever we do one of these discussions on Anthem, I want to ask myself, as I go to make this video for you guys, how the topic we're covering connects to how the player plays the game, how you experience Anthem. In this case, it all starts with you booting up the game and rolling out in your Ranger Javelin as a rookie freelancer. You'll then earn the other three javelins while in the game's critical path. Now these javelins can be swapped out freely at any point in time as long as you're at Fort Tarsus or your mobile forward base. You don't have to start the game all over again to say experience the Colossus after you started with the Ranger. There's none of that. You are a pilot. That's your main character. A pilot, a freelancer. The javelins are your tools. They are your vehicles for exploring the greater world of Anthem. Speaking of the javelins, let's go over them one more time. We've got the Ranger, which is your general use multi-class. The Storm, which is your magic user, sort of your glass cannon. The Interceptor, which we still don't have official details on, but is obviously focused on going fast. And last but not least, we've got the Colossus, your big guy, not at all focused on going fast, but instead focused on shielding, protecting the team, and tanking damage. That's the base layer of player choice inside of Anthem. Which javelin do you want to use? The great thing about being able to use any javelin at any time is that you can mix and match. Your team of four individuals, you're stoked for Anthem. Day one rolls up, I'm using the Ranger, you got the Storm, Dave's on the Interceptor, Sarah's on the Colossus, right? Maybe 10 hours in, maybe two hours in, Dave's all of a sudden like, man, I, I really don't like the Interceptor. I'd much rather play the Colossus. And Sarah's like, you know what? I'd rather play another Ranger. And then you can just switch things up, man. If you're playing solo, which is going to be one of the more challenging ways to play the game, you can then bounce across the different javelins, finding the one that works best in different combat situations. Maybe you're struggling with this boss fight, and you've been using the Ranger because it was a good multi-use class, but then you realize, you know what? I actually need more health here. Maybe you need more speed. Maybe you need more damage. You go with the glass cannon capabilities of the storm. And if you're running in duos or in a trio, again, all of these options, all of this potential applies. I'm a huge fan of that. We're also then going to have an additional layer beyond that. Each and every javelin is going to be able to equip two weapons and two pieces of gear. Each javelin also has its own defensive maneuvers and its own ultimate ability. When it comes to equipping those weapons and that gear, though, each javelin has its own unique arsenal, its own unique selection of gear, and there will be weapons that are specific to certain javelins. For example, the Ranger can use cryo grenades. Just the Ranger can use that good old cryo grenade. The Colossus is the only javelin that can wield the heavy machine guns. You can then further modify some of those components. So the cryo grenade can be set up to send out an additional shockwave from fallen enemies that were frozen before they died. We then go beyond all of that, and we've got our pilot skills. Once again, you are a pilot. This is a progression system within the game that is constantly going forward. So as long as you're in a javelin, you are gaining pilot skills. Passive skills, for example, that might let you have a longer boost time before your javelin overheats. And again, these skills carry across all of the javelins. So if you spend 30 hours just obsessed with the storm javelin, you don't play anything else, and you suddenly decide you want to tank as the Colossus, you still get a lot of those earned passive abilities, maybe even some active abilities, we don't really know the details yet, from your general pilot skill progression tree. Now we talked about co-op, playing alone, the Bioware team is very keen to remind people that this is a game that has been built from the ground up for co-op. While you can play alone, that's where they're putting all of their efforts is on that co-op experience. So they're focusing heavily on team play. Obviously, the different javelins having their strengths and weaknesses, having missions where they might excel or where they might struggle, and needing other javelins to support them is a big part of that co-op experience. It goes beyond that, though. So... Even though the Colossus can show up with the shield and protect the team from mines or enemy explosives, there might then be a situation after that where the Ranger shows up, throws down a cryo grenade, allowing the Colossus to get a little bit more damage out of its mortar strike. This is the game's combo system, and it is somewhat reminiscent of the combo system we saw inside of Mass Effect, where one ability could target an enemy, allowing another ability from you as the player or another party member to do additional damage. This seems a little bit more 
open, a little bit less specific than what we got in Mass Effect. It's kind of like, if that enemy's frozen, they'll take more damage. If that enemy's electrocuted, they'll take more damage. If that enemy's on fire, they'll take more damage, etc., etc. Nonetheless, it is a layer within the firefights, the combat of Anthem that gets me excited. I want to see a lot more of this focus, and I think in general we have too many of these share world shooters that are just like, maximize damage right like oh i got the big gun let me come in with the big gun right just this focus on damage the idea that the benefit of team play doesn't come from cooperating together and you know sharing abilities and setting up damage potential but instead just having more guns people are like we well, gotta play co-op because you got four guns instead of one that's a part of anthem no doubt but there's an extra layer of it's not just about having four guns and having more firepower it's about having four guns and how they can work together in specific situations to the use of tactics ability management to increase that firepower maybe without ever actually all firing four guns at once i like the direction they're going with that anything that keeps groups of players more active is also something that i really look forward to in these shooters get us as far away from the shooting gallery concept as you possibly can get us involved with the world and get us working with one another if we choose to play in that co-op setting if you play alone well you better start to min max man because you might end up having a tough time, but nonetheless, it all sounds really fantastic to me, actually. Anthem's the type of game that I'm just as much looking forward to playing with a group of friends as I am to playing alone for the sake of that challenge. That's pretty much everything we know right now. I'm curious to see just where the weapon archetypes are going to go. Like, we know there's heavy machine guns now, and only the Colossus can use them, but what else is there? Are there rocket launchers? Are there certain, you know, there's certain other held weapons outside of the obvious attachments that are going to be restricted to other classes like the Storm or the Interceptor or even the Ranger. I guess time will tell on that one, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this info, guys. What do you think of it? What has you excited? What maybe has you concerned? Let me know down in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.